Dustin Poirier, 22 to 5 MMA, 14 to 4 UFC, and Anthony Pettis, 20 to 7 MMA, 7 to 6 UFC, delivered on the expectations, engaging in a wildly entertaining fight that saw the Diamond take home a third round TKO in a blood-soaked affair. The lightweight bout was the main event of today's UFC Fight Night 120 event at Ted Constant. Convocation Center on the Old Dominion University campus in Norfolk, VA. It aired on FS1 following prelims on FS1 and UFC Fight Pass. Poirier took the center at the start, looking to press, but Pettis was there to open with a few powerful kicks to the legs and then up high. A Pettis flying knee just missed, and Poirier then changed levels and quickly drove the action to the floor. Poirier kept the legs wrapped as Pettis patiently worked to a sitting position and looked to crawl to his feet. Poirier stayed heavy on top, and Pettis turned to Akimura. But Poirier reacted well and was able to pull free and move to his opponent's guard. A slick Pettis sweep created a scramble, and the two moved back to the feet, where both men landed crisp right hands. Poirier came up short on another takedown but a nice right hand followed and briefly stumbled Pettis. Poirier turned up the head, and combinations rocked his opponent. Pettis answered with a spinning back fist that stunned his opponent, but Poirier and continued with the assault until the bell. Pettis seemed fully recovered to start the second, coming out aggressive and looking to strike. Poirier again turned to the takedown, getting the fight to the floor and battling through a triangle attempt from his opponent. Poirier scored with a few big elbows from the top, slicing open Pettis, who was forced to roll and expose his back. With blood streaming down his face and impacting his vision, Pettis was able to spin and sigh and take top position, scoring a few big punches and elbows of his own. Wild scrambles followed, with both men covered in blood and battling for position. Eventually, they returned to the feet where Pettis scored a takedown but was unable to control Poirier, who slipped out the back door and took top position. With blood pooling on the face of Pettis, referee Keith Peterson called time and brought the doctor in to take a look. Despite a few nasty cuts and dangerous spots, the fight was allowed to continue, and Pettis locked in a dangerous triangle choke in the final seconds. Poirier survived the hold and wound up on top. Striking until the bell, both men looked battered to start the third, and after a few back-and-forth strikes, Poirier again pushed inside for a takedown. Pettis looked to scramble free, but Poirier was able to slip the round to the back and lock in a body triangle. Pettis did well to battle the hands, but as he again tried to spin inside the hold, Poirier transitioned over to mount. The torque was too much for Pettis and he verbally submitted due to an apparent injury, resulting in a TKO finish. It was weird, Poirier said of the finish. I thought I was going to get the head and armor rear naked choke. He was hurt, and I felt the power leave him. You know the point in a fight when a guy gets broken. I do that to a lot of these guys. I'm a nasty dude. I love this. This is what I live for. The talking calling people out and acting crazy. That's not what I do. I fight. Up to the minute UFC Fight Night 120 results include. For complete coverage of UFC Fight Night 120, check out the UFC events section of the site. Majunkies Matt Erickson contributed to this report on site in Norfolk.